to show up first or a player, but uh, gigs. Hey, going to have uh, Jordan Burbank first up, so hold on. I mean, you can take it right now. Okay. How do you? How's it going, Jordan? Good, how are you? Doing well. Every, everyone else ready? If TD's ready. Yep. All right. Well, Jordan, just what has it uh, been like to uh, get back on the field? I'm sure it was kind of a, a weird summer and, and with some uncertainty about when y'all would be able to get back on the field. It was in the, like, it was in the coming. We were so excited just to be able to get back on the field be able to touch the ball and be able to play back on Ellis where we just love to be. What was it like? What is it like now going out and practicing, knowing that y'all aren't maybe even sure if there's going to be an NCAA championship or, or what the future holds for y'all with that? We are definitely keeping the mindset of not like the unknown is not in our control and we're just going out every day playing to the best of our ability and playing for that day first, instead of focusing on what is and what could possibly happen later. Jordan, how excited are you about the, uh, the possibility of how good this team can be? I know you guys lost a couple key girls from last year, but you return a lot of talent, and Coach G's been talking up this freshman class and the new transfers, like something special could be happening here at College Station. Yeah, for sure. We are so excited with the possibility of this team. We have a ton of new faces that are bringing in new uh, key potential and just really awesome vibes that is really growing this team's chemistry. This team has nowhere to go but up. I know you're stepping in at goalkeeper, so what, uh, what's the defense look like in front of you? And uh, on the other side of it, you don't get to see Allie Watt score goals anymore, so who do you think can uh, pick up that production? I think our defense this year, we're really coming together. We're forming like a solid back, a back line, just really putting things in motion. And I definitely think this year. Hey, uh, KBTX. Yeah, that wasn't me. I double checked. That wasn't me. That was KBTX <laughs> News. It's KBTX News. Sorry about that, Jordan. It's not a You're not good. Our fault, but... Jordan, can You're you? Good. I'm so sorry, Jordan. Can you? Uh... Yeah, just the defense in front of you and how excited you are to perhaps step in a goalkeeper and then watching the offense on the other side, who, who, can, uh, who do you think can step up and replace Ali Watt? Yeah, so I think our defense, we're really coming together. It's going to be awesome just to see this chemistry form, and it's going to be a really great back line. Uh, we're going to be big, like, a defense is going to be hard to beat for sure. And I think this year, definitely Taylor Zemer is going to come out and – score some goals for us. And I also think um, Barb, Barbara, one of our new people, 
she's going to step up and I don't think we're going to have a problem with having players up top switch in and out being scoring goals for us this season. What, what does practice look any differently now because of all the um you know the the things that you're having to do to kind of social distance and whatnot does it does it look or feel any different? Um other than wearing a mask every day wearing that on the field nothing has changed we still have the same mentality we're still playing as hard as we can, even in these circumstances. So, no, I think we're doing great so far with practice and staying ahead. Jordan, I'm curious with this unconventional offseason, do you feel like it's made this team even closer? I think for sure it has made this team closer. I think it has made us realize what's important and how not to take things for granted. Each practice, each day is a gift for us, and we're just excited to be back out here and doing the things we love. Hey, Jordan, I know that you guys have been back on campus for some time now, and uh, you guys are kind of in a controlled environment and that you, you know, you go to and from workouts and things like that. But do you have any uh, trepidations or anything that kind of worries you about going to class with a bunch of other students who aren't athletes and soccer players? I mean, that's a great question because that is something we've definitely been thinking about because it has been a controlled environment and it's been very easy for us to control the uncontrollables within ourselves. Um, definitely seeing how other people will get back to campus will be a big question. But so far, I think everyone has been keeping each other accountable and making sure we stay safe and healthy. And I don't think anything will be an issue. Given the oh, given the standard of given the standard of of Aggie soccer, just I know there's a lot of unknowns, but if you are able to compete for championships this fall, just how do y'all just embrace expectations each you know year in and year out? I think we we've we've had a great legacy here at A and M, and I think we've embraced day in and day out our competition in stride. I think it's always a great competition, but. This year, A&M has a great chance to compete, and we're going all the way. We want to compete for a title, both in the SEC and for a national championship. All righty. Uh, thanks, and Gigan. We'll have Jimena up uh, next, and then Coach G. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Jordan. you, guys. Good luck, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Good luck. Howdy. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing well. Um, mm -hmm. just wanted to start off with what's it? Uh, what 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 was the first day of practice like? Especially with kind of a weird um, summer leading into it, and and how excited are y'all to be on the field when when maybe the start date had been a little uncertain for a while. Um, it was awesome just to be out there and um, it's really a blessing just to be able to be here and and get to practice with all the team. I think that was a big challenge for all of us being away and practicing by ourselves, you know, for so long. So we're really appreciating being able to be here all together and getting getting back into rhythm and getting used to playing with each other. Yeah, it, 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 I know uh, today the NCAA voted to to or, or, or said they're going to wait to vote to see if they're what the championship is going to look like or what y'all's postseason is going to look like is there, is there any frustration or is there any um what is it like to be a player starting practice not knowing if there will be a championship or what that will look like um i don't know it's it's challenging because some of us are planners <laughs> but um, at the same time, we're just uh, controlling the controllable. We know those decisions are out of our hands. And um, like people say, it's easier to just, we, you can cancel everything in just one day. But putting it back together takes a lot more work. So we're just preparing as if we're going to play, as if we're going to have a season. And um, I think it's going great so far. So how, do, how does a planner plan for not knowing what to plan? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not that big of a planner, to be honest. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like going to with the flow, but um, I don't know. Some people have been stressing a little bit about about it, but I think what helps is 
just taking one day at a time and not making any speculations because once you speculate and create expectations, you can let yourself down pretty easily. So I think it's just going with the flow and just taking it one day at a time. What's Coach G's role been in this, Amina? Um, Coach G has been doing a very good job communicating. I think every time he's find, found out something new about SEC decisions or about um, A&M letting us practice on our field or uh, letting us do pick up there and like moving through phases, he's been really good about communicating that. And he's really let, let clear all the rules that we must follow and how um, this season more than ever, I think the school that does all the right things is the one that, that's going to take it. So, What's it going to be like playing up front without Ali Jimenez and, and who do you think could step in and, and replace some of that scoring production? Um, well, Ali was definitely a big part of our program for four years. And so she's a big... Um, how do you say when you miss someone? <laughs> I don't know. Well, we're going to miss her, of course. But um, I think that just gives us a chance to change our style of play. Being such a fast player and um, being able to take the spaces in behind, I think we're going to have to change that. And having um, this new new freshman coming in, I think we have a lot, a lot, a lot of talent coming in. So I think it's going to be great to see those young people go out there and and just have fun. I think the advantage of being a freshman is that um, nobody knows how well you play or not. And so let's say if you're Ali White and you have a name for it, everybody's going to be on Ali White, you know? And so if you're a freshman, maybe not so much. So I think we can take advantage of that. I mean, as it stands right now, uh, you only got those two non-conference games before SEC play would crank up pretty quickly against Tennessee. Does that make fall camp even more, I guess, the urgency factor that you're not going to have that many non-conference games before you potentially start SEC play, or is it just kind of business as usual? Um, no, there's no urgency factor because actually now we get a whole month, you know, of practice. So that's going to be good, and it's, I think it's like something we need because we have been away for so long. And... I think we're one of the first teams to be here for so long. So we can definitely take advantage of that and get prepared for what's to come. I mean, when y'all were uh, kind of sheltered in place or, or not able to work out, soccer can be a, when you work on your skills, there can be some very individual parts of it. Do you feel like everyone um, was able to kind of get away and work on their touches and work on some of their individual game that y'all might come back a little bit more um, cohesive than maybe some other years? Um, yeah, it was definitely a challenge uh, like for some people just because some people don't have a field available, you know? And so it was it was good for, for everybody to get their touches in. I think our juggling as a team has definitely improved because it was one of the couple of things everybody could do. Um, but like you said, it was... Most of us have been here since July 1st, and a couple others were here since June. So um, being here since July 1st has really allowed us to work out and do all the fitness together. And we voluntarily were uh, meeting at Veterans Park to, to play some soccer and to, to get some touches in. So I think that really helped. And um, the, rust, the rustiness is off. So now that we are practicing, Everybody looks really good, so I'm happy about that. All righty. Thanks, and Gigam. Thanks, and Gigam. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Hey, guys. Howdy, Coach. Howdy. How you doing, Coach? Good, thanks. So, uh, everybody good? So, yeah, Coach, um, what, uh, I know the NCAA today made the uh, vote to uh, uh, move or, or delay the, the decision on the championship. What does that mean for y'all? How weird is it to be beginning a practice for a season that you don't exactly know what the end looks like? 
Well, I'll give you the uh, G-rated version of, uh, of what I think. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's disappointing that the NCAA isn't showing more leadership um, for, uh, for, for these kids. I mean, it, it's, hard. it's hard on these, these young student athletes to, uh, to be able to, you know, have a, they're, they're all goal oriented and they're, they're motivated to, to succeed at the highest levels. And, you know, they keep the, the goalposts are sometimes are moving, sometimes they're not even there. And, uh, just to allow these, these, these people to understand what we're going for and, and how things are going to be. It's, uh, it, it's been, I know it's been frustrating for our student athletes. It's been frustrating for me too. Mm -hmm. So how do you as a coach try to set a, set a common goal to kind of keep them focused when, when there is so much uncertainty? I mean, it's been, it's been the, the conversation for months now too with all the different moving goalposts. Well, the, the good news is we're training. Today we were on the field. Yesterday was our, our first day, and uh, we were able to, you know, get out. So, I mean, there's, if, if, you, if we didn't have the masks on, you, you'd see that we all had smiles on our faces. Um, with the masks on, we're just huffing and puffing for air um, to, uh, to try to stay alive. But with, um, with everything that's going on, at least we got a start. And so for us, you know, we, we, ca we carry on that, our first game is still going to be on the 4th of September at Oklahoma State. Um, that our first SEC game is going to be on the 18th against Tennessee. And until somebody tells us that it's going to be different than that, then um, that's, that's where our focus is. So, you know, we have, uh, I think Amanda said it earlier to y'all, we have one month to uh, prepare. That's, that's 14 days longer than we usually get to prepare. So for a, a, a control freak like myself, it's a chance for us to, to not only get ourselves into a good training rhythm, but also to uh, take care of a lot of fine tuning and everything else. Today was the first day on the field. So it was, uh, you know, it was, this was our baseline today and yesterday. Coach, what's the trade off of those extra two weeks of practice versus having some non-conference games? Would you prefer one way or the other, or do you think with everyone in kind of the same situation, it won't matter in the long run? Well, I'd like to have, I'd like to have my cake and eat it too. Um, you know, I'd like to have, you know, our 20 games back instead of now I'm down to 14 games. Um, and I, and I hope, I'm hoping that we don't go less than that because I want this to be a, a meaningful season for our, our, our seniors, especially, you know, that, you know, I want, I don't want all of a sudden that just some bureaucrats have said that our season can only be half as long as it usually is because they're, because of things that, that are not for sure, but it looks good. So um, we're going to do everything we can to keep our kids safe. And we're going to do everything we can to, uh, to put this team into a, a championship uh, mode. Um, but we need to, you know, we, we just need to concentrate on, on what we're doing today and hope that the people that are representing us are, are doing the right things. I know that Ross Bjork is, is doing everything he can to, to represent Texas A&M and represent our student athletes and our university um, in the best ma method possible, which means that we're going to put Texas A&M first in our, in our thoughts. So, you know, it's just a matter of, I, I wish the NCAA would just make up their mind and um, would, would be bold and to say that we're going to do X, Y, or Z um, so that we can then focus on, on what exactly that is right now. It's just a matter of, um, trying to be the best we can every single day. But that's, that's kind of a common thing anyway with the players that come to this program. Other than uh, the masks, like you and, and him and I mentioned, is, game, is um, practice planning, is the way that you run practice any different um, with COVID precautions at all? Uh, well, COVID precautions, yeah, it's crazy. There's, uh, so we, we don't get to use the locker room. Um, we don't get, the girls don't get to hang out at all. Um, so a lot of things that we would be doing to build teams, um, all the all the protocols are for not building teams. They're for building individuals and spaces, which is completely understandable. Um, but you know, we're a team sport, and so we're, we're looking that when we're in training, when we're actually when we cross the line and step on the field, what can we do that's safe but still is fostering a um, an educational environment one that the girls can learn from each other and can learn how to how to be a better how to be a better team so 
All of those are different. Obviously, we all did testing again this morning. Um, that's something that Texas A&M is doing a great job of. And, uh, you know, the uh, issues of what we can do and what we can't do when we're on the field or on the players is, uh, is a little bit different. So, and the other thing that the benefit, of course, is that we only have to train once a day. Uh, typically, we would be training um, twice one day and then once the next and then twice and then once and then twice and then once and kind of rotating through there. And that can be a real grind on the players. So the fact that this thing has been stretched out, I, I see as a real benefit because the players get a full, you know, 21 hours to recover from a hard training session um, today. Gee, Can you talk about um, the returning team that you have and, and the, the new guys that you have coming in? Well, it's a, there's a lot of new players, uh, which is exciting. Um, you know, a couple of players that uh, I'm sure that you guys will, uh, will, will see and hear a lot about. Um, Barb Oliveri is, uh, is a, a really, really special player. She's an attacking player. She was a you know, high school All-American, was the Texas State High School, the Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, and is uh, someone who's played in international competitions for Venezuela. She's from Katy, Texas, but her parents uh, come from Venezuela. Um, Kate Colvin, who's played with the Dash in Houston is, uh, and has trained with a professional group down there in the past, is a, a super player and a, a really good teammate uh, on how she plays. Lainey Carroll comes out of Southern California, is a terrific um, attacking player. She's, she's uh, scored some speed uh, marks that that really have uh, pleasantly surprised us that she's she's really fast and um, and then of course you've got a lot of a lot of our our key players coming back you got Addie McCain coming back you got Jimena Lopez coming back you got Macy Cole coming back so we'll be uh, we'll we'll have a probably a different shape to the way we play because we'll we'll adjust it to these new players and to the, the strength that we have returning but it'll still be a it'll still be a Texas A and M team that uh, hopefully strikes fear in our opponents. Gee, I asked Jordan about it. Do you have any uh, trepidation about your athletes going back to class with, with athletes that are not in your program and being watched closely by the athletic department? Sure. Um, again, the, the control freak in me, which is a very strong uh, impulse that I have, and I think most coaches do, we worry about what is happening with the players when they're not in our bubble. Um, we know that that any, there's been no positive um, tests coming from our facilities, whether it's our weight training facilities, our dining facilities, um, our practice facilities, game facilities. It's, it's the wild cards. It's those people that can come in contact with our players. That is, uh, that, that's the only concern. But we've talked to our players. Again, we've got some really intelligent young women on this team, and we've talked about being intentional and being – more conscious of the people around you than, than ever before. And, you know, they've been, it's been well-versed into them to, uh, that if they have a, an opportunity to take an online class, take an online class. If they, if they go into uh, face-to-face classes with uh, professors and with other students, to uh, be smart about how they enter the class, where they are, and you know, keep their mask on. Coach, okay. I, I never uh, planned to, or never be a soccer expert, so. Just talk to us a little bit, please, about the offense. And when you have a player like Ali Watt who moves on and has scored so many goals in your history and you lean on her to lead your offense, how do you go about attacking a defense when you don't have one so-called star player like that? I know, and I'm not saying you're other players on stars, but how do you go about readjusting your offense? Well, I think one of the, the things that I love about college sports and, the, and what I love about being a college coach is the fact that every year is different. Um, every year we graduate players. So graduating a player is never a surprise to us. It's actually the goal that we brought them to Texas A&M to, to get their degree. Allie got her degree um, and uh, was, you know, an outstanding um, representative of the school. But it, it just means that we go on. So we, we just turn the page, and a lot of the characters are the same on the next page as they were on the, on the prior. It's just that, you know, we won't, we won't have – someone in a number one jersey running past people at that pace that we've, we've had in the past. So it, the other thing about it is that I look at it from a positive is people, we're going to play a little bit differently because of the, the tools that we have to use. And so it'll mean that people have got to defend us differently than they have in the past. They can't just 
lay back and try to protect that space in behind them that Allie was going to attack. You'll see a little bit like when we played against Texas in the uh, NCAAs last year, we weren't going to get behind them. We didn't think that Allie was going to score in that particular game because they protected that space so much. So what did we do? We scored four goals in front of their defense. Um, and all the players who scored those goals, except for uh, Grace Piper, are all back. And um, so I, I really, I, I come into the year very confident and, and I'm obviously excited about what Allie's been able to do and thankful that she was here. But it's the same thing when we graduate any of the other 30 All-Americans that have come through this program. We just, we just pick up and, and reload. Building off that, Coach, this kind of two-part question, but how, how exciting or, or how fun is it from your perspective to kind of mold a new team that, that may play a little different way? And then part two of that is we always talk to you and you talk about the championship expectations of this program. Do you think this particular group of girls has the chops to compete for championships in both the SEC and on the national level? Well, yes, I think I think they do have the ability. Um, th this is this is a, a, this could be the, a, a different year than anything. Obviously, everything is different. The way you're having to prepare, um, the distancing, the, everything else that's gone into it. It's it's uh, it's a tough it's a tough world right now for a teenage student athlete, um, just because all the things that they've really been doing for their whole life um, have got to be tweaked just a little bit. But from a coach's standpoint, that's that's where we get to shine. That's where we get to be the problem solvers and to put those those pieces of the puzzle into the right spots and to and to and to fit things in the way that are going to make Texas A&M the most competitive team that we can that we that we can muster. You've had some success. Um, obviously, you got Taylor Pounds coming in. Haley's sister, and then um, Kendall Bates, is she going to be healthy? And then the Zemer. Talk about um, you recruiting sisters to come into the program. Well, it's, it's a nice thing when you have sisters that get along. Because we all, we all know stories of, you know, the sisters that don't get along. Um, but these, uh, we're, we're, we're really blessed to have uh, these girls. You know, the Zemer sisters are, uh, are, are super. Um, they, you know, they, they bring a, a California flair and, and uh, personalities to the uh, to the team, and obviously love each other dearly. Um, and it's it's that's obvious. The the Bates sisters were the same way. When Emily was here, um, was it, it's interesting to see the differences in, in people that were raised in the same in the same home. You have that base of of a great character, but just different different personality, uh, slight uh, tweaks here and there. Uh, Kendall Bates is as as good a person, as good a human being. As you'll ever be around, and, uh, and we're lucky to have her in this program. And she's she's come back from uh, from, an AC, from two ACL surgeries and uh, is is really doing great. She's had a great recovery. All this time off to do stuff on her own, she's been she's been doing things that no one else has been able to do uh, while no one else is watching. So I'm really excited for her. And then uh, you know the Pounds are another great family. Uh, you know Blake and. And uh, his his kids are all. It's funny. It's funny how um, you know when you have good parents, and uh, Blake and Don Pound are really really good people. It, it's just such a coincidence that great kids tend to come out of those out of those environments. And that's uh, what you have with uh, with Taylor Pounds coming in. She's a very different than Haley, but uh, but man, she is she's an awesome person. Yesterday in the fitness in our fitness test, she absolutely blew it away. And uh, was a, that, was a, that was a great thing to see for a freshman coming in and doing as well as she did. So it's, uh, it's neat that there's legacies and families that what you do is you come to Texas A&M and play with your sister. And uh, I, I hope that we get to do that a, a lot in the future. I think, we've had, I think we've had at least eight pairs of sisters over the time that I've been here. And it's, uh, it's always neat. It's always, it's always a cool thing to be a part of. That's awesome. Coach, you talked about um, the, the more time giving and, and the people you return being able to kind of assess the talent you have and, and, and work from there. Do you see with a little bit more time in practice working through some different kinds of formation changes um, or, or working through any kind of new philosophy as far as formation goes? Or is it the, the, the same um, thing that y'all were looking at last year? Well, I don't get that biblical, but, you know, know thyself. Is, uh, is, is something I think is really important, that you've got to know 
you have to know what you can do and you have to know what you can't do. And so a big part of what our preparation, especially this first week or even this first two weeks, is going to be learning our players learning what we do well and what we what we probably need to polish up or, or the, what we need to avoid. Um, so, you know, my coaches are exceptional at, at highlighting uh, special powers that our, our players have. And uh, Phil Stevenson is our associate head coach is a, uh, is a master at, uh, at, at identifying talent, but also developing talent uh, within the program. And I think that you'll see that you'll, you, there will be people who pop up this year, that you haven't seen, if, if you're a, a longtime Texas A&M soccer fan, there are people that are, you're going to go, oh wow, I didn't know she could do that. I, I didn't know that that was that was part of that was one of the tools that she had in the uh, in the shed. So that's that's the thing that that we're working on right now, and we're not in a big hurry. So that's kind of the fun thing about it is that we can go through our, our sessions without this ticking time bomb that you know a game is coming up in a week or three days. We initially. We were going to start on the 4th of August and we were going to have a game on the 7th of August. So now that was going to be a fast motion. Well, we, we've, we've completely altered away from that and we're going into trying to be thorough, but um, keep it fun because it's going to be four weeks of, of training. We don't want to, we don't want to burn anybody out. Yeah. And then you mentioned with, with replacing uh, Allie, do you have an idea of kind of who's going to slot into that, that number nine slot or is there a, committee or is that up for grabs as you work through uh the the, the fall well it, it's it, competition every day um every day anyone has an opportunity to grab any position and uh but through their performance uh today for example reagan smith was outstanding and uh you know reagan is clear is a senior and she's developed oh, in her in her time here so reagan would be one of the first people that we would that we would think would be one of those scary people to uh to uh, frighten our opponents because she's strong and she's she's uh, she she's tenacious in the way she plays. Uh, Lainey Carroll is another kid who comes out of California, who also is a, a very very talented player. I talked about uh, Barbara is is also a, a great player in there. Jai Smith, who's a, uh, a transfer from Seton Hall, is also someone who is uh, I mean she's got a great change of pace and uh, very tenacious and powerful on the ball. So. Whether we play, you know, the thing about Texas A&M soccer is, is that we, we've never been a system program. We've never been a, a program that just plays in one thing and you just slip new pegs into those, those, those uh, round holes. We, we basically, we, we look at who we have. We figure out what's the best way to get our best 11 players on, on the field and how do we highlight that whenever we make substitutions within the game. And then that's how we formulate the way that we're going to play. It's, it's not just, you know, here's the playbook and this is what we're going to do. Um, you know, we, because we think that we, you could waste talent that way and you could miss out on, on really, really special players that, uh, that should be on the field. You just have to find a way to make it fit for them. Coach, I got one last question real quick. I know Ellis Field's one of the best home field advantages in the country. 12th man comes out, and, and you said many times that some of the opponents that come in there, it's the most fans I've ever seen at a soccer game. If you guys are at 50% capacity or less, how's that going to affect not only you guys, but just how does the fans affect the soccer game in general? Well, if we're at 50% or less, it's still more people than other, other people play in front of. So uh, it, it'll still be – you know, the, the thing that I, I look at the 12th man about being is I, I think it's a way of life that you're going to step up for, for, your, uh, for your mates and, your, and the people around you, and you're going to be a good, a good citizen. Being a good citizen at Texas A&M, what that does is that gives our players bursts of adrenaline, and that adrenaline is what gives our a – lot, a lot of times gives our players those superhuman qualities to be able to beat people. That all comes from the home field advantage of what we do. There's some, there's some places and there's a lot, of, a lot of athletes out there that get really intimidated by their own home field and they struggle to play in front of their home crowd. And, and that's something that we, we talk about with our players all the time. That, hey, these, these people are here to help you and they're going to boost you. They're going to give you extra energy. And, and so our players come in into games kind of expecting that. So if we're not allowed to have anyone in the crowd, then I guess, I guess I'm going to have to really pump up my, my volume a little bit to uh, – Get, get my pom-poms out and, and cheer a little bit more for the, uh, for the team. 
Awesome. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Appreciate it, y'all. I, I, wish, uh, you. I wish you guys could come out sometime, and uh, maybe that will happen soon. Right right now, I'm, I've been kind of collecting photos from, uh, from our session where our girls are all wearing masks and collecting photos from all the other teams in the SEC where they're not wearing masks. And, one, and we'll be asking some questions. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes.